Hey guys, welcome back. Um, if you haven't noticed, I turned off the camera because um, I just worked out and I kind of look like a crazy person and I really just want to focus on the material rather than um, my hair, which is um, looking like a rat's nest. So we have 15 minutes and 33 slides. So let's get going. Topic 1.4, membrane transport. So membrane transport across the membrane. There are a few different ways that can happen. So we have passive transport, which would be either diffusion or facilitated um, diffusion using a protein. And then we also have active transport. So this would be using um, ATP. So diffusion and facilitated um Facil diffusion and facilitated fusion are forms of passive, passive transport. Um, no energy is needed, although channel proteins may be used um, as necessary, and molecules passively move across the membrane down their concentration gradient from an area of high concentration to low. Um, active transport, on the other hand, requires an investment of cellular energy, a.k.a. ATP. So one type shown above requires a protein pump to... Um, um, to move molecules and ions against their concentration gradient from areas of low to high concentration. So, passive transport, diffusion. Diffusion is um, actually driven by the in intrinsic kinetic energy of molecules due to thermal energy, and individual molecules tend to move around randomly, but population populations of molecules tend to move from areas of higher to lower concentrations. Um, so molecules of the dye, here's water, membrane, cross section, here's an equilibrium. So it going, it's going with the concentration gradient. What kinds of substances move across membranes by simple diffusion? Gases, like oxygen and carbon dioxide and small non-polar mo molecules like fatty acids, some amino acids, and some vitamins are not repelled by the hydrophobic phospholipids in the membrane. So they move across by simple diffusion. Some small polar molecules like water can also pass through, although not easily, only very slowly. So this diagram shows the diffusion of oxygen from inhaled breath moving from a high concentration in the sacs of the air to a lower concentration to the blood and a diffusion of carbon dioxide in the opposite direction. So what kinds of substances move across the membranes by facilitated diffusion? So most polar molecules, um, monosaccharide sugars, some amino acids, some vitamins, and all mineral ions excuse me, also enter the cells passively by diffusion. However, because they are either charged or large um, and hydrophilic, they require a special type of membrane protein in order to pass through the hydropho hydrophobic phospholipid bilayer. This is still considered a passive transport because it doesn't require any ATP from the cell. And it's type of it's still a type of diffusion because the particles tend to move from an area of high to low concentration, but it's not simple diffusion, it's facilitated diffusion, meaning it requires help from special proteins um, in the membrane. So channel proteins possess a hydrophilic ch channel slash tunnel that through the core of the protein um, that allows passage of a specific molecule or ion. Uh, other types of protein transfer proteins called carrier proteins lock channels. Instead, they have special binding sites for particular substances and change shape after binding, which carries the molecules across the membrane. So transport protein, proteins are very specific, examples being the glucose protein in the liver will allow glucose to move from the blood into the cytoplasm of the liver cell. However, other types of monosaccharide sugars like fructose cannot enter using this type of protein. Transport proteins. Unlike enzymes, they catalyze a physical process, not a chemical reaction, and help transport substances across the membrane that would otherwise be relatively impermeable to the substance, like enzymes, um, can have specific enzyme binding sites for specific solutes, like enzymes can become saturated, like enzymes can be inhibited by molecules that resemble the normal substrate and outcompete for binding sites. There are many different types of transport pro proteins, can, including open channel proteins, chemically gated channel proteins, voltage gated channel proteins, co-transport proteins and protein pumps which require ATP. So open channel proteins provide a hydrophilic um, corridor allowing a specific molecule of ion or of or ion to diffuse across the membrane. So an example would be aquaporins um, which facilitate diffusion of water across the membrane called osmosis. And then there, of course, are chemically gated proteins, which open or close depending on the substance or the, on the presence or absence of a chemi chemical stimuli other than one transported, such as a hormone like insulin or a neurotransmitter like dopamine, allowing specific ions or nutrients to pass through. And then there's a voltage, voltage 
gated channel proteins which open or close when the voltage across the cell membrane changes, allowing the specific ions like um, Na plus to pass through. Woohoo! Okay, here are some examples. So here's a receptor protein, here's a channel protein, here's a gated channel protein, which um, is in the closed position. Here's a carbohydrate group, this is a glycoprotein. Here's a cholesterol within the semi-permeal membrane, and then here's a transport protein. This is the cytoplasm. Okay, compare types of passive transport in cells. Four marks. So, osmosis. Um, differences in the relative concentrations of dissolved solutions, solutes in two solutions can lead to the net movement of water from one side to the other side of the um, other. The solution with a higher concentration of solutes is called hypertonic, and the solution with a lower concentration of solutes is called hypotonic, and solutions with equal solute concentrations are isotonic. So these are comparative terms. Tap water is hypotonic compared to, um, oh, sorry, Tap water is hypertonic compared to distilled water, but hypotonic when compared to seawater. So imagine the two that two um, sugar solutions differing in concentration are separated by a membrane that will allow free water through, but not sugar. So free water molecules will tend to move to the hypotonic um, solution where they are abundant, to the hypertonic where they are rare due to some H2O molecules forming hydrogen bonds with the with the sugar molecules. So osmosis will continue until the solutions are um, isotonic. So as you can see, there um, they will. It will go until the, um, this is a select, a selectively permeal member, but it's essentially trying to get that isotonic, um, isotonic, oh yeah, it's just trying to get the solutions to be isotonic. So osmosis is the diffusion of water molecules across a membrane to form a hypotonic to a hypertonic solution. So diffusion requires a concentration gradient. When two solutions are isotonic, water molecules move at equal rates from one solution to the other. This is not called osmosis anymore, why not? When there is no longer a concentration gradient, water moves in both directions across the membrane at the same time. That is not diffusion, so it is not osmosis. To be diffusion, molecules had to move from where they are in higher concentration to where they are lower. So we're balancing water uptake and loss. An animal cell in an isotonic environment experiences no gain or loss of water, and this is optimal. And an animal cell in a hypotonic solution will gain water, swell, and probably burst. An animal cell in a hypertonic solution will lose water, shrivel, and probably die. So why do we get wrinkly toes in water? That's a whole other thing. You can click on that link if you guys want to check that out. But, um... Plants, prokaryotes, fungi, and some protists have cell walls that contribute to the cell's water balance. A plant cell that is hypotonic will swell until the cell wall opposes further uptake. Unlike an animal cell, it will not burst. Instead, it becomes um, turgid, 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 rifid, stiff plant cells aid in mechanical support of the plant, which is optimal. And turgor pressure is the plant cells can re about, reach about 100 psi, which is... Um, many times greater than the air pressure in an automobile tire. Interesting. Okay, so if a plant cell and its surrounding are isotonic, there is no movement of water into the cell, and the cell is flaccid, and the plant may wilt, so not optimal. But in a hypertonic solution, the cell will loses water, it volume shrinks, and eventually the plasma membrane pulls away from the cell wall. So this um, plasmosis is usually lethal to the plant cell and is very bad. So here's just more images. So cells lose water and shrivel. Cells take up water and burst. So, and then here's plant cells. And then who led the Israeli Israelites through the semi-permeal membrane? Where's the thing? Osmosis. Osmosis. Oh, okay. Well, we didn't get to see the meme. Whatever. Okay. So, what factors affect the rate of diffusion across a membrane? So, the temper temperature of a solution. Higher temperatures will result in a faster rate of diffusion because more heat means more kinetic energy for movement of particles. The concentration gradient across the membrane. The greater the difference in the solute concentration across the membrane, called the gradient. The more rapidly the solute molecules and or ions should diffuse, the size and chemical properties of the molecules or ions. Um, small nonpolar molecules diffuse faster than larger and polar ones. And then for charged or polar molecules that require a specific transport protein, uh, the abundance of those transport proteins affects the rate, more transport, and yeah. So here's just an example of a database question. So 
Let's look at this lab. Okay, here is a lab experiment. Da 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 da. Okay, let's talk about active transport type one protein pumps. Transport active solutions against their gradients. So some transport proteins called protein pumps can move solutes against their concentration gradient from the side where they are less concentrated to a side where they are more concentrated. And so this is called active transport and requires the cell to expend its own metabolic energy. And so the active transport is critical for a cell to maintain its internal concentrations of molecules that would otherwise diffuse across the membrane. So active transport, um, an active transport example would be the Na. Um, K, and this is um, ADP plus P, so it turns into, a I mean, basically need ADP, ATP to do this. So, um, active transport against concentration gradient with an input of energy. What molecule is needed to do this? ATP, and how does it do this? By transferring its terminal phosphate group directly to the transport protein, which induces a conformable conformational change in the protein that translocates the solute and bounds to the protein across the membrane. So we have um, adenosine plus or um, that inorganic phosphate, and then it basically makes it to ADP. So plus the energy. So the um, and the sodium potassium pump actively maintains the gradient of sodium and potassium ions across the membrane. And inside an animal cell, there is usually a higher concentration of potassium ions. And outside of the cell, there is usually a higher concentration of sodium. So the sodium potassium pump uses the energy supplied by one ATP pump um, to pump and um, to pump sodium ions to the outside of the cell and the potassium ion ions to the inside of the cell. So here's just an image of how that would happen. Okay, so here's another one. So this is basically like three three um, three sodiums would go in and then it would exit and then two two potassium could go in and then da 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 da. So um, this is cytoplasm and then bulk transport. So bulk transport. So some large molecules such as proteins, hormones, and large lipids cross the membrane via vesicles. So this process requires ATP energy. So it is another form form of active transport. So the ATP is used by motor proteins to change the shape of the membrane to move vesicles along the fibers of the cytoskeleton. So no concentration gradient is required for bulk transport. And there are two types of bulk transport, um, exocytosis and endocytosis. So during exocytosis, a transport vesicle, also known as a secretory, not a secretory, a, a secretory, I, I can't say it, that has butted off from the Golgi apparatus is moved along the cytoskeleton of the plasma membrane. When the, pla when the membrane of the vesicle makes contact with the plasma membrane, their membranes fuse together and the contents of the vesicle are released slash secreted to the outside of the cell. So exocytosis, see what happens, all the stuff are excreted and then the vesicle just moves into the cell membrane. So endocytosis is the reverse process of exocytosis. During exocytosis, a cell brings in a large molecule by forming a new vesicle around the plasma, mem plasma membrane, and a small area of the plasma membrane surrounds the substance that will be taken, forming a pocket. As the pocket deepens, it pinches off from the plasma membrane, forming a vesicle that contains material that has been from outside of the cell. So here's the extracellular environment, and here's the cytoplasm. So extracellular fluid, this is endocytosis, and that is exocytosis. So basically the vesicles um, always stay within the um, the cytoplasm. So here's a concept map of transports between membranes. So cell transport does not require energy. It's passive. And so through a membrane is simple diffusion using a protein. You can either do facilitated diffusion or a channel protein. If you're going to use some energy, it's active transport. But if you use a protein, then that's a protein pump. And then no protein would either be bulk transport. So into the cell would be endocytosis and out of the cell would be exocytosis. So that is the end of our membrane transport um, topic 1.4. 1, 1, um, 1. So I hope you guys enjoyed. hope um, you didn't miss my face too much. Um, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.